You are listening to the Grand Canyon TV audio tour for Mather Point. You can navigate to Mather Point by typing M A T H E R Point or Grand Canyon South Rim Visitor Center into your GPS. Mather Point is the most popular viewpoint of the entire Grand Canyon. At an elevation of 7,119 feet, that's 2,170 meters above sea level, you can see a lot of the Grand Canyon from here. Now, this viewpoint is popular for a few reasons. It's located near the Grand Canyon National Park South Rim Visitor Center. In that visitor center, you can talk to park rangers, receive information, maps, and you can view a free movie that will give you sweeping views of the Grand Canyon. I highly recommend it. This is also the only viewpoint Well, one of the only viewpoints where commercial buses are allowed to stop and unload passengers. And it is the viewpoint where the largest parking lot is located, accommodating visitors with trailers and RVs. In fact, this is the ideal place to park a trailer or RV if you are planning to then use the parks free, yes, free shuttle bus system. This is where you want to go to, Mather Point. You will find the main shuttle bus hub is located just south of the large parking lot. So from there, you can hop on shuttle buses that will take you all around the South Rim. Also worth noting, this viewpoint is ideal if you are traveling with children in strollers or elderly or handicapped guests who are wheelchair bound. You can even rent a wheelchair from Bright Angel Cycles located here. And of course, as the name says, you can rent a bicycle for the day from Bright Angel Cycles. If you are beginning to walk towards the edge of the canyon, Notice, from Mather Point parking lot and visitor center parking lot, you are not going to see the Grand Canyon. So if you begin walking north out of the parking lot, you are going to come upon these breathtaking views of the Grand Canyon. So do remember to breathe. You are very high above sea level, and this is going to make the air thinner meaning it quite literally has less oxygen in every breath you take. I do recommend drinking plenty of water and taking electrolytes to help acclimate to the altitude. You are now higher than Denver, Colorado. Remember, this is 7,119 feet above sea level. As you begin your walk from the parking area and visitor center, notice that we don't have people parking directly on the edge of the Grand Canyon, right? This is for a reason. So notice a few things as you are walking. The trees you are seeing around you, these are mostly juniper trees and pinyon pine trees. The juniper trees are the twisting trees with shaggy bark. They do not have pine needles on them. They have little green sprays. The junipers will stay green throughout the year. You also might find some trees that are missing their leaves or leaves turning color, or if it's the summertime, their leaves are green. These are the gamble oak trees. And you also will notice some pines called the pinyon pine. Some of the larger pines that you might have seen on your drive into the park, those are the ponderosa pines, the very large ones. But these smaller pines are the pinyon pines, and they will have pine cones, which produce those very expensive pine nuts often used to make pesto sauce. The juniper berries, as I mentioned, on those juniper trees with the shaggy bark, 
Their berries are edible, and they are used to flavor a drink called gin. Native Americans in the area refer to the seeds inside of that juniper berry as ghost beads. They make jewelry out of these ghost beads, which you will find in many of the gift shops. And I do encourage you to purchase gifts from Native American tribes, wherever you can find them, especially you will find these in the Hopi house. So these ghost beads ward off evil spirits and protect you, and they are made from the seeds of those juniper berries. Now, at this point, you should be getting closer to the actual views of the Grand Canyon. Remember, as you approach the rim of the Grand Canyon, you are on the south rim, and you are going to be looking across to the north rim. In front of you, you should see stairs leading down to a point surrounded by metal fencing and railings. This is all for your safety. So please do not try to climb over the railings for a better photograph. You will find by walking to the left or right from this viewpoint, you will eventually get to parts of the canyon where there are no railings, where you could take a photograph that is clear of any metal railings. Yet, like I said earlier, this is the ideal viewpoint if you are traveling with young children who love to run around or somebody who is wheelchair bound. As you approach Mather Point, just to the left of those big stairs leading you down to the point, you will find a winding paved pathway ramp that is going to lead you down or back up from the main Mather Point viewpoint. By walking all the way out there to the edge of the viewpoint, remember you're staying behind the railings, you can see the Colorado River at the bottom of the Grand Canyon. And yes, the Colorado River is still running to this day. It is huge. It is averaging 80 feet deep and it is wider than an American football field. All right. It just seems tiny because you are standing taller than the Burj Khalifa and the Empire State Building combined at this point. You are looking thousands of feet below, more than 4,000 feet down to see the Colorado River. So if you have not spotted that Colorado River, I'm going to help zone you in. Walk along the left side railing. Make your way over to the left side of the railing. All right. You're now going to be looking down to the deepest parts of the canyon you can see. And remember, you are on the south rim, so everything across is the north rim. The river has cut the middle. At Mather Point, you are just going to be able to spot small portions of the river. And from this spot, standing at the left at the railing, you are just going to see a small triangle or V of the river. If it's been snowing or raining, the river water will appear muddy brown. Yet, if it's a clear week, the river water gets filtered by the dam, the Glen Canyon Dam that is hundreds of miles upstream, and the water will appear a greenish blue. And if your timing is perfect, you might actually see some bright blue or yellow rafts going down that river. Uh, that is going to help if you have some binoculars to actually spot rafts on that river. As you're looking down there towards the river, you may see some thin lines about halfway down the Grand Canyon. Those thin lines are trails. So from this point on the left side railing, you can see the Tonto Trail below you, and you can see a trail that is branching off of the Bright Angel Trail called the Plateau Point Trail. If you walk to the right side of the viewpoint, you can see the South Kaibab Trail. So make your way over to the right side of Mather Point, right up on that railing. And you're not going to be looking across towards the north rim. You're actually going to be looking east. You should be able to spot the next 
point jutting out into the Grand Canyon. It's called Yaki Point. And you can use your maps on your phone to help you spot Yaki Point. If you look directly below Yaki Point, there is a trail winding down. This is the South Kaibab Trail. Again, it's going to help you a lot if you have some binoculars to view the trail because through some high powered binoculars, you could actually spot people who are going to look like little ants on that trail. Now, this is a good reminder to never throw things into the Grand Canyon. Do not throw rocks, coins, frisbees, golf balls, baseballs. There are always people down in that Grand Canyon at any given time. Do not throw things in there. If you have a pair of binoculars and you look across to the north rim along the top there, you would actually see the North Rim Lodge is located over there. And remember, the North Rim Lodge is only open from May 15 till October 15 because the amount of snowfall they get. Also, if you make your way out to the very edge of the viewpoint, go all the way out there. And if you look down near the bottom, but you're looking on the north side of the river, you can see a patch of green trees. That patch of green trees, those are cottonwood trees down there. And you might be able to make out some rooftops. That is Phantom Ranch. That is where hikers can get a hot meal, a beer, and they can spend the night in cabins. There also is a campground down there called the Bright Angel Campground. So if you're having any trouble spotting that Phantom Ranch, you're looking for the green patch of trees, but also just on the left side of that green patch of trees, you might see some white water. Or again, if it's been snowing or raining, it would be muddy water. That is a creek called the Bright Angel Creek, running just along the left side of the camp. So if you're looking to the bottom and seeing a big patch of green trees with a thin creek with a lot of white water, you have found Phantom Ranch. And why exactly is this viewpoint called Mather Point? Well, at the top of those stairs, you might have noticed a plaque. And you can take a look at this on your way leaving Mather Point. But there is a plaque with a face of Stephen Mather. And the plaque reads, Stephen Tying Mather, July 4th, 1867 to January 22nd of 1930. He laid the foundation of the National Park Service, defining and establishing the policies under which its areas shall be developed and conserved, unimpaired for future generations. There will never come an end to the good that he has done. So, Stephen Mather was born on the 4th of July. He became a millionaire by mining borax. His love for the outdoors brought him to become an undersecretary in the Department of the Interior, and his criticism of how America's public lands were being managed landed him the job. They basically said, look, if you don't like the way it's being run, why don't you run it? So he was criticizing public lands, This landed him the job as the first ever director of the newly founded National Park Service in 1916. Horace Albright was his legal assistant and ultimately his successor. This viewpoint is honoring Stephen Mather, who basically is the father of the National Park system. Now, speaking of conservation, you will not find restrooms or trash cans right at Mather Point. However, you will find these restrooms, drinking water stations, and trash cans back towards the Grand Canyon South Rim Visitor Center. Also, I highly recommend that free movie that they show in the Visitor Center. And as I said earlier, you will also find the main shuttle bus hub here, back there by the visitor center. 
So Mather Point is the ideal place to park. If you are looking to do some hiking on that South Kaibab Trail, you can just hop on the shuttle bus. They will drop you off right at the trailhead, but be sure to check the times. They usually run till about sundown. So be sure to check those times with your shuttle bus driver to make sure you're gonna get back to Mather Point. Now, worst case scenario, you could walk the paved rim trail back from South Kaibab Trailhead all the way back to Mather Point. It's gonna take you a long time, I'd say an hour to 30 minutes walk, but it's not incredibly far. Thank you for listening. I'm your host, Crocky Meshkin, and this Grand Canyon audio tour is brought to you by clothingofthegods.com. If you are looking for Grand Canyon t-shirts, stickers, and posters, many of which are priced less than $20 USD, and all of which are made from 100% natural fabrics, go to clothingofthegods.com and you will find Grand Canyon t-shirts with graphics showing the rims of the Grand Canyon compared to the tallest structures in the world. That's clothingofthegods.com.